Okay, what I want to do in this video is show you how to measure the volume of your combustion chambers or the CC of your combustion chambers. Uh, in front of me you can see a 4AG engine head. Uh, the process of combustion chamber volume measuring is, uh, is the same regardless of the engine head. The process is relatively simple, it doesn't require any advanced tools and it can be done by anyone. Before I show you uh, the tools and the supplies you will need to measure your combustion chambers, I first want to tell you a little bit about the compression ratio. Uh, the compression ratio is, is the reason why you want to measure your combustion chambers. If you are overhauling or, or upgrading or tuning or improving your engine uh, you, you, want to, you want to know your compression ratio. Your compression ratio is a very important measure of your engine's uh, potential power, potential power output and, and its efficiency and, and many other factors. So what is compression ratio? Uh, the easiest way to explain compression ratio is, is to understand the, the cylinder and the piston as it moves in the cylinder. So if we have the piston and if we have the cylinder, the piston moves up and down in the cylinder. As the piston moves up and down in the cylinder, it changes the volume of the cylinder. When, it, when the piston is at its lowest point, uh, that is when the cylinder is at its largest, that is when the volume is largest. When the piston is at its highest point, that is when the volume of the cylinder is at its smallest. The compression ratio is the ratio between the largest and the smallest volume of the cylinder. Uh, so for example, if your engine has a compression ratio of 10, 10 to 1, that means that the largest volume of the cylinder is 10 times bigger or larger than the smallest volume of the cylinder. So the bigger the compression ratio the better and I won't go too deep into the compression ratio in this video. The goal is to show you how to measure your combustion chamber combustion chamber uh, volume. Why do you want to measure combustion chamber volume? Because uh, you have to know your accurate combustion chamber volume when you measure your compression. In any, comp uh, in any compression calculator, compression ratio calculator you can find on the internet, uh, you will need to input your combustion chamber CC or volume. What you will need to measure your combustion chamber is a plate of flexan or acrylic. As you can see, you can find these in hardware stores. They are fairly cheap. They are usually used uh, to, to put toy or aircraft models in boxes. They are really good for this purpose. They are flat and, and you will see that they will perform just fine for measuring your combustion chamber. You will also need a set of four spark plugs. They do not have to be the exact spark plugs that you will use in your engine. They just have to be a set of four spark plugs that fit. Uh, these are not the ideal spark plugs for the 4AG, but they will do uh, good enough. They will do just fine to, to measure the CC. You will also need a fairly large syringe. You will use this to extract the fluid and put it in the combustion chambers. You also need a, a can of WD-40. You can obviously use water or alcohol or any other liquid. I prefer to use uh, WD-40 because, WD because I don't want to put water in the, uh, in the head because I don't think water belongs in the head. You also need all your valves. As you can see, I have neatly, uh, um, I have neatly packaged the valves and you have to know which valve goes where. Be very careful, do not mix up your valves. And you also need a, a, you also need a drill and a drill bit. You will need to drill the, the exact same plate. I will show you how. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put the spark plugs into the engine. Uh, since the spark plugs are going to be into the engine when it's operating, they are of course influencing the volume of the combustion chambers and they have to be in there for the measurement. So we have to turn over the head, of course be very careful, the head is stupidly heavy. And we will take the spark, spark plugs, get a spark plug, get a spark plug socket, put in a spark plug. You probably know this, this is very simple. And put them in. Okay, 
One. My hands are a bit oily, so it's kind of hard to pull the, the socket wrench out. As you can see, the spark plugs are in there. The next step is to take the OX same plate, and you will see that most of them have this protective layer. You can go ahead and peel it off, it will give you better visibility. It has a layer on both sides. See? That's super shiny and beautiful. You put it over, like so. And what you need to do is take a screwdriver and mark the middle of each combustion chamber. I will be doing the measurement of all four combustion chambers at once because I think it's faster and easier that way. These will be the spots where you will drill the waxing plate. So after you have marked the points you will take the waxing plate. The best idea is to set the head aside for this and put the waxing plate on the two pieces of wood that the head was resting on. This is done in order to prevent damaging your floor or, or whatever. Now you need to take a drill bit. The drill bit has to be slightly bigger than the filling tip of, of your syringe. Mm -hmm. okay. You can now go ahead and drill, drill the points you've marked. So be sure to hold down, hold down the waxing plate. I actually have very, very noisy neighbors, and I'm going to enjoy doing this. Okay, after you have drilled in the holes for the combustion chambers, you want to take your head and put it back in its, in its previous position. <coughs> At this point, what you want to do is We'll leave, we'll leave the plate with the holes for, aside for now. And at this point, what you want to do is take your valves, take your valves and put them in their corresponding holes. Again, I can't stress this enough. Do not mix them up. Okay, when you're putting in your valves, what you want to do is take a bit of petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Just a bit of it and put it around this side of the valve. Uh, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because uh, you don't want any of the liquid that will be in the combustion chamber. You do not want it to leak and petroleum gel jelly will prevent that from happening. So it's a very, very useful, cheap and useful substance for that. This is my number two exhaust valve. This is the exhaust side on the 4AG, it's this side, you can tell by the hole for the distributor. This is a big port head, you can probably notice that as well, these are big ports. The small port head has, has like narrower and smaller ports, intake ports. Okay, that would be enough and you can go ahead and slide it in. In case your valves don't want to go in easily, just get some oil. Get some oil and lubricate them, and they should go in pretty easily. So, once all of your valves are in place with sufficient amount of petroleum jelly applied, it's time to put the wax sand plate in its place. So, what you will do, go test the fitting, and again take the petroleum jelly and apply a thin coat around the outer edge of the combustion chamber, like so. Why are you doing this? You, you don't want the liquid to go 
from one combustion chamber to another, distort your measurement and so on. Obvious we do this around every combustion chamber. Ooh, that's a bit too much. Okay, let's fast forward a bit here. After you have applied the petroleum jelly, put it aside and wipe out any of the excess jelly in the combustion chamber. You don't want petroleum jelly inside because again, there's too much of it, it can distort your measurement. That should be enough. Everything looks nice and clean. We will take our wax and plate out of it. If any of the holes have, have some debris in them, obviously, obviously clean it out. Take this step easy. Push it on and we go side to that. That should create a this should create a seal. You want sealing between of course the plate and the combustion chambers. Okay, wipe everything so you can see what's going on inside. Okay, this is where the actual measurement begins. You will take a cup of what looks like P, but isn't really P, it's actually WD-40. You can go ahead and empty the contents of the can into the cup. You want enough WD-40 to cover all the four combustion chambers. So this is this is 200 milliliter. Stock combustion chamber capacity of a 4AG big part head is 36 cc. So you want about 130, 140 milliliter. One milliliter is actually equal to one cc. I think this this ought to be enough. It's easy to add later on if it proves to be insufficient. You will take your syringe, make sure that it fits in each of the openings. It does. Take them out from the cup. Be careful not to spill anything. Be sure to check how much you have taken. Okay. It's probably a good idea to let the WD-40 settle to, to get rid of these um, Get rid of these air bubbles. The WD-40 seems to have settled, so we'll go ahead and take them out. I will actually go and go ahead and take 34 milliliters, there you can see, and see if it fits in the combustion chamber. You want to go ahead and put the contents into your combustion chamber. Okay, I have now measured each of my combustion chambers. I have filled with each one to the top until there were basically no air bubbles. Number two and one aren't perfect, but they were fairly close. So each of these is actually very close to 36 cc, which means that this head is probably most likely stock and uncut. Okay, after you have done the measurement, what to do? The syringe is useful here again. 
before you lift up the vaccine plate and spill everything and make a mess. Take the syringe and take out the WD-40 as much as you can from each combustion chamber. Then you can safely lift the plate and you won't spill anything. The, the WD-40 won't go oozing down the head and onto your carpet or floor or whatever. Basically that's it. An easy, simple, cheap DIY way, way to measure your head. All the best, have fun with your 4AG and until next time.